Right, hello wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And those of you that know me know that I put half of these tastings on the calendar just to please myself. And uh, well, you know, we have a lot of good friends in the wine business and they're in town to visit you. I mean, there's no better time to get together with friends and drink their wines. And Giorgio Lovetti has become a good friend. So close of a friend that uh, when he started his in import company, Indigenous Selections, he looked at our building for office space, and now he is also one of our neighbors here. Yes, he's got his office for his U.S. import company here at Progresso Plaza. So only fitting that we should do an event here with him every year. And, uh, well, we change it up every year. We did a small, intimate event, which uh, we didn't even need to sell send an email out to sell it because Georgia has so many friends here. We've done this so many times. And this year on a Tuesday night, uh, we had 30 people out in the grotto here at Progresso Plaza picnic style. And uh, Giorgio brought his kids, his two beautiful daughters, and of course his wife. And uh, a good time was had by all. We even ended up at Laser Wolf for a few beers afterwards, which doesn't happen very often. Beer just doesn't have enough alcohol for the amount of calories for me anymore. Anyways, a lot of great stuff on the table. And you know you're always going to get extra. Some people called and said, um, hey, you don't have the single vineyard Barbarescos in a lineup. I said, you want to taste them? We're putting them on the table. Bam! There they go. And uh, we had all three of them. 2010, a very and highly anticipated vintage from the Piedmont. Georgia was talking about Tuscany also, how the wines are just incredible. But they've had a slew of great vintages. 14, the most challenging uh, definitely in Tuscany, but 13 and 12 and 11, uh, you know, also outstanding years in the Piedmont and Tuscany. So a slew of great wines to come. And uh, with these wines, you know, always great values. When you look at the great wines of the Piedmont, you have to look very hard for wines, you know, in the $100 and up range. And, you know, Giorgio's got a few, but they're very small production and they'll last a lifetime. You put these wines in your cellar, the great Barbarescos and Barolos, the Nebbiolo-based wines of the world are the longest lived. Anyways, we started out this evening with one of the most unique things in the world. You know, vermouth started in the Piedmont, in this part of Italy. And uh, Giorgio, when he bought this Contrado property, they had some recipes that were over 100 years old. And after he tasted them, he said, man, these are incredible, but I don't know how to make this. He had to buy the recipe uh, from them. But uh, the white vermouth that we showed, absolutely outstanding to start out the night. Even by itself, an incredible elixir, just a bouquet on these the flowers, the herbs, the spices in them. And uh, even though they have a little residual sugar in them, they're a little sweet, uh, they still have nice freshness on the finish. So this Contrado white vermouth was a big surprise for people because when they think of vermouth, usually think of stuff that's really cheap and uh, not very good. And this stuff's not cheap. It's $30 a bottle, but trust me, you, uh, you pour a glass of this stuff, even by itself, but even with a few ice cubes to mellow it out a little bit, they recommend a little tonic and then a little uh, mint in there also. It makes a nice little aperitif cocktail. Absolutely beautiful. And then to refresh your palate, onto the Contrato Sparkling, the Method Classico, which this is a blend of 80% Pinot, 20% Chardonnay from Old Tropo Pavese. It used to be part of the Piedmont at one time. The oldest sparkling wine house in Italy and uh, this for $25, $26. One of the best values we have in Method Champenois. You close your eyes, you would think uh, this is possibly champagne. It is aged entourage for the same length of time as uh, champagne. 18 months you get a little of that nice tea, uh, toasty biscuity quality out of this and that yeast autolysis. Some nice bright apple and lemon citrus fruit and uh, lovely smooth creamy bubbles in this wine. Very fine bubbles and uh, just a really nice refreshing uh, uh, drink to have after the vermouth. And then on to the rosé which uh, wasn't another added surprise. Wasn't scheduled to be at the tasting but the 2014 Giorgio brought with him uh, the newest thing in the lineup, Rosé of Sangiovese under the Tuscan label. And this wine, really lovely wild strawberry fruit to the nose, a little hint of floral notes, some nice uh, uh, nice dry finish, uh, very refreshing rosé. And uh, this wine, right around 20 bucks, an outstanding little value. We will have it in the store as soon as it arrives. The Vermentino also has taken on uh, a lot of fans here. and They planted... Uh, Vermentino vines in their vineyard. And they also contract some stuff. Uh, they liked it so much. A really bright and uh, refreshing white wine is a nice little hint of floral quality to the finish. And almost like a nice, nice light spritz. Very refreshing. Vermentino becoming very popular. Most popular on the island of Sardinia. Uh, the ones from Tuscany tend to be a little richer, not quite as light. Um, and then on to the reds, uh, so a short stint of whites. We are going to get some Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay. I reminded Giorgio how much we love 
those two wines from his Piedmont property, property, some of the best examples of those varietals you'll find anywhere in the world. They'll be coming on the next container. All right, the uh, the Chianti Reserva 2009, this vineyard located in the southwest corner of the Chianti region. Uh, it's got fruit from both the Cezana and Sassantino vineyard here, and uh, larger barrels, so a lot of people moving away from the new oak here. This wine has a beautiful bouquet of pretty floral notes, red cherry berry fruit, cassis, a little red licorice, uh, some herbs here also, a classic Chianti, really light and uh, refreshing on the palate, those floral nights, uh, highlights and a little fresh earth showing on the end. Excellent juice. And uh, Il Colorino, uh, which uh, this is a unique varietal they usually use to blend in Chianti. Colorino means color. This wine's got a good amount of that and exotic spices, dark black raspberry fruit, herbs, a hint of peppery on, uh, spice on the finish there. Uh, nice amount of that herbs and spice showing through on the palate. Some tannins at the end, but ripe and round tannins. This wine had a nice freshness to it, even though it is big, uh, still balanced. A bit tannic, but really nice with a pork belly, I thought. And uh, that's excellent juice. Also, the Barbaricata Pian uh, from the younger vines grown on both sites in Castiglione uh, and where the Bianzo Vineyard is located in Galena. And uh, this is uh, six to 20 year old vines here. Some of the Barberos that these guys make, the Bianzo and Galena, are the best Barberos you will find in their type here. And this wine had a really nice black truffle, dark plum kind of fruit to it. And uh, really fresh flower and herbal notes. Nice complexity on the nose. Even in off vintages, the 2002 I've had, it was 10 years old. Amazing how wine, well this wine ages because of its balance. A nice amount of that dark berry fruit on the tongue. Smooth round tannins. Lovely floral and herbal notes. And a wonderful freshness. Barbera is known for its firm hand of acidity here. Excellent juice. The Bianzo is Barbera on steroids. Barbera at another level. A lovely amount of blackberry, dark cherry fruit, and array of pretty violet floral notes, mocha, black licorice, some earthy notes thrown there. Also, big and chewy on the tongue, double the concentration of the Cala Pien. Lots of richness, cassis, dark berry fruit, and that dark spice and floral nuance at earth showing from the nose all the way at the end. Most excellent juice at 50 bucks. Man, there's a whole lot of wine in the bottle here. You'll not find a better Barbera. All right, the Barbaresco Bordini is next, and this is a four-hectare vineyard on the western side of Nieve, facing south, 20 to 25-year-old vines. And uh, wow, this wine's got a beautiful bouquet here, dried rose petals, fresh mint, white truffles, nice earth, some red berry fruit, really nice complexity here. This 2010 vintage, even though it's showy, this fruit really juicy on your palate and velvety on your tongue, these wines are big, and they got some dry tannins on the finish still. And uh, But a lot of ripe fruit here to match. Like I said, a lot of people say they like these wines. Drinking them today is somewhat pleasurable, but this wine needs 10 more years in your cellar. Excellent juice. The Galena, always the most feminine of the three Barbarescos. Really low yielding vines in the Eve. Only 900 cases of this wine produced. A beautiful bouquet of fresh flowers, herbs, and minty quality. And a little fresh, wispy green grass. Some people say they get in this wine. Red cherry liqueur-like fruit. Exotic spices. Camper. Really Really smooth and elegant on the tongue. This wine's got a lot of nuance, some fine tannins here at the end, and a bit chalky, but going through that baby fat stage right now, really drinking nicely, but wonderful structure. This wine will last for decades in your cellar. Trust me, I still have some of the first vintage, 1996, most excellent juice. We'll be drinking that at one of Giorgio's events coming up in the future. The Star Dairy up next, the red label. We like it how he color code coordinates everything, and uh, Giorgio says the challenge with Star Dairy is crafting a wine with both power and elegance. This wine usually a step up in terms of richness from the Galena. Really rich bouquet, that red cherry, cassis-like fruit shown, fresh flowers, truffles, exotic spices, good amount of fruit on the palate. This wine really rich and unctuous, layers of exotic spice, perfumey, floral notes, and this wine's quite tannic right now. It still needs some time, but has everything in proportion. Even better on the second day. Um, wow, really most excellent juice. The Valorano also most excellent. Uh, this is from the Nieve Township, and uh, lovely black, dark berry fruit here showing, black truffles, dark cherry, some cranberry also though, nice freshness in this wine, quite large on the tongue, dark berry fruit really, a lot of dark spices, a potpourri of floral notes, always the one to me that needs the most time, this Valorano, most excellent juice. And then the Campe Barolo, yes we do have a killer score in the group, Campe, started in the 2000 vintage with a 98 point review from the Wine Spectator, and this wine has not looked back since. Always one of the highest rated wines for me and my review of Barolos. And this wine had just an incredible bouquet of dark cherry liqueur, fresh herbs, rose petals, red licorice spice, very well endowed. That strong herbal and floral character lasting through the finish with a truffle earthy notes and uh, some dry tannins. This is Barolo. Definitely needs a little time in the bottle, possibly 10, 
20 years. It'll last 30 years or more. We've had 40, 50-year-old Barolos from great vineyard sites that are still stunning. So check it out. Everything we had. Actually, we had the red vermouth to finish. What a nice way to finish a tasting. And uh, you start, you end with vermouth. That's one of the great things about these aperitifs. They work either way. Uh, really cool stuff, the vermouths from Contrado. All right, that's what we had to drink with our friend from uh, La Spinetta Winery, Giorgio Rovetti. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember... Always drink the good stuff first.